The first thing we need to do is measure the thread. You measure the outside diameter of the thread. Which is 40 mil. Then we need another thread pitch. Measure thread pitch we use a thread gauge. I know the I know the thread is 1.5 pitch 40 by 1.5. That's a 1.5 gauge which fits in just nice. That one doesn't fit. That one fits. So another the thread is 40 mm diameter by a 1.5 pitch. This is actually an AR32 collet adapter. I'm copying it, making one for me, box for later. The lathe I'm going to use has actually got uh, an imperial lead screw and an imperial gearbox. Now, to cut a metric thread on this lathe, you need a conversion gear, which is a gear. The gear is a 127 100 tooth. I'll show you show which gear it is. Got 127 teeth on here and 100 teeth on here, and that gives a conversion factor which is very, very close. So it converts it into metric. You change this wheel here, this one here, and I have a chart which tells you how to set the gearbox up to cut the metric thread. I'll start the lathe up with a guard opener so you can see how the gear train actually operates. As you can hear it's quite noisy, this is normal, these layers are noisy in back here, it's nothing to worry about. I'm going to make sure you set the um, change wheels up with plenty of backlash in so the gears aren't binding us, very important. This is the drive unit of the lathe, uh, it's actually a three phase uh, motor, I'm running it through an inverter. As you can see I've got it in the lowest, uh, lowest speed possible, I'll also put the headstock in the back gear. This is a four reverse switch, it also has a speed controller which is infinitely variable from zero to basically two and a half thousand revs. The lathe is fitted with a thread dial indicator. Uh, in this situation I wouldn't be using that. Once I engage the lead screw it wouldn't be unengaged until the thread's fully cut. That way mistakes can't be made. This is the handle that controls the lead screw. I start the lathe again and engage the gear. You can see the carriage is starting to move forward now we're bouncing into the work. When we actually start screw putting I'll uh, show you how I, how, how I actually do it by reversing the lathe so I can't lose the thread. This is actually what they call single point screw cutting. Uh, a lot of people make the tool go parallel straight into the work. The correct way to do it is to tilt the cross slide at half the angle of the thread. It's a 60 degree metric thread so you take it across 29 degrees just under half. This means when the tool's cutting as you'll see later in the video it's cutting on the front edge of the tool, making a knife forming a nice curly chip, and the rear of the tool merely polishes the thread. If you wind it straight in with the tool parallel, you're cutting on both sides of the um, both sides of the tool, makes it a very very heavy cut, and you end up with tool breakage. This shows the graduations on the lathe top slide. I'll uh, loosen the knock nuts off and move it across to the desired angle, 29 degrees which is basically, that's 30 I'm doing it this way, you use the top slide to put the cut on and the cross slide is used to wind the tool out of the job your cut's put on there you set a cross slide at zero when you get to the end of your cut, you stop the lathe wind that back one full turn reverse the lathe, stop it back into zero on there and you advance your cut on the cross slide It'll all become uh, crystal clear hopefully later on we'll try to cut the thread. One of the most important things with any form of lathe work is the tool height in relationship to the work. Normally it's set dead on centre height. As you can see the tool here is well below. With this quick change tool post, wind it up 
and get it so it's absolutely dead on centre height. And that looks pretty good. We'll lock it up with that. There's various methods of setting the centre height. Uh, the tailstock centres always work well for me. This is the adapter I've made. Uh, it was made on this machine, so obviously it's got to run concentric. Uh, I've got quite a bit of time with machine in this, so I want to make sure when we come to cut the thread, uh, the thread's right. Otherwise, a lot of work will be wasted. The next thing is the tool must be square to the job. This is a commercially made tool. It's actually a foam tool uh, for CNC machining. The tool tip is held in the tool holder. So if I set the tool holder square to the end of the job, the tip must be at the right, uh, the right angle of the job. Fetching them, that's loose. It's, it's touching. It's touching both sides there. So if I tighten that up, that's a tool set dead on centre height and square to the job. If it was a homemade tool, you'd have to use a tool gauge. That's the gauge there, set various angles. You would put that square onto your job. Something like that, and fetch your tool in so your tool is touching both sides of there. That will ensure your tool is square to the job. Everything's set up now. I've adjusted the cross side so the tool is just touching. We'll take a trial cut and it should barely take the marking blow off, then we'll remeasure the thread. That's the first trail cut. The first thing you do then, when you cross slide back, one full turn, reverse the lathe. Need to still engaged, it's winding back without damaging the thread. If you didn't reverse, didn't wind your cross slide back, it would pull the threads off as it went back. All it's doing is literally taking the blowing off. We'll use the thread gauge now and make sure we are actually at 1.5. Stop the lathe, turn the cross slide back in one full turn. You must adopt the procedure and do it the same every time, otherwise you'll make a mistake. I've got my 1.5 thread gauge here. I think you should be able to say that. Absolutely spot on. 1.5 millimetre pitch. The lead screw is still engaged. We'll set the cross slide back to zero. Turn the compound slide in just a little bit. Lead forward. Now we're cutting threads. The beauty of this is you can slow it right, right down as you get towards the end of the cut as things suddenly seem to speed up. Slow, slow, slow. Really slow and you can stop it just as it drops off the end. Once again, when the cross slide back one full turn, reverse the lathe, speed it up a bit, advance to slip the feet on the compound, that's set at zero, lathe forward, slow it down a bit. Down towards the end, really slow. Stop. Cross slide, out one full turn. Reverse the lathe. Like I can say once again, the routine of doing it this way, you keep on doing it, if you make a mistake, you've only got one chance. Stop. Cross it in one full turn. Advance the compound slide. We'll get a cut rubric then, always helps.
just starting. Starting to get in the ass. Do a couple of passes of the set of the same, the same setting. Because it doesn't take much to, uh, to make the third slack. So much difference that was, that was one very, very light cut between not going on and being nice, and that's a nice, nice film, please do that. That's a collet. 